Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior, this day. We move on with our season topic, where we are saying um, maintaining integrity in times of suffering. And today we are looking at the subtopic of hope in desperation. Hope in desperation. And our text for today is Job 19, verses 10 to 27. Job 19 verses 10 to 27 and shall be read to us and for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, our first reading will come from the book of uh, Job chapter number 19 verse 10 to 27. I who is leading, I'm Jane. I'm saved this morning and I'm happy to be with you. And I read, He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns, like, burns against me. He counts me among his enemies. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp, ramp against me. And encamp allowed my tent. He has alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. My guests and my female servants count me as a foreigner. They look on me as on a stranger. I summon my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Even the little boys scorn me. When I appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I'm nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. I uh, have pity on me, my friends. Have pity, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead all engraved in lock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I'll see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and another, and not another. How my heart yearns within me. That's the end of our reading today. May God be honored and praised for his word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, our loving Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity you've given us to hear your word. We ask that God you speak to us, that your word will have a place in our lives. For this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This text that we have read talks about the desperation that Job went through because of his suffering. We have in the past looked at how he suffered, the way he lost everything, the way he lost his family, the way he lost his friends. And today, in this chapter 19 of Job, he is addressing three areas in which he is desperate. One is from within him. He is tormented and crushed by, with words. That right in him, he felt crushed. He felt tormented by the words that were there. Two, he was stripped of his honor and the crown of his head. In this text, he says, that he doesn't feel like the honor he had is not any longer there. He felt like someone who is stripped off even the crown that was in his head. That good that he had was all gone. He also felt torn, torn down on every side. He felt like someone who, who, who each part of his life was torn apart and torn apart. He felt like someone who is, uh, um, who is going through challenges that would make him feel like someone who is torn apart. Then, of course, he comes up with a very, very uh, interesting uh, statement saying that uh, he was uprooted like a tree cut down. You can imagine the way many times when we cut trees, we don't just, we just cut on top. 
but he felt uprooted, like all his roots are out. So he felt like someone who is displaced, if you are to say in other words. And finally, he was nothing but skin and bones. Imagine the way you see someone who is dilapidated, someone who is sick and dying. He felt like someone whose body, his skin was, had, way, had worn out. That's, that's one area. Number two, about his family, the, the separation that came through his family. One, he was alienated from his family, lost his children. His wife even uh, kind of disowned him. His relatives had all gone away. He didn't have anyone around him. He felt someone who was left lonely. And at times, the Bible says here, that his breath was offensive to his wife. So anytime he would go near his wife, his wife would just throw him away because of his breath, because the sores in his, in his body were stinking. And so he was a man who was rejected by his own wife. The third thing, or that desperation, is about his community, that he had reproach and he felt ashamed before the community, especially when you are rich, when you are a billionaire and then you have nothing. You can imagine that kind of shame in our society. And that's how he felt. Since he had lost everything, he felt ashamed. Even being able to reach out to the other people who were his fellow, fellow, fellow rich men, he wouldn't. And the guests would count him as a foreigner and a stranger. Imagine losing everything until you become a stranger and a foreigner. And Moas, his female servants, would also count him as a, as, a, as a slave, as a foreigner. His acquaintances and his friends who were intimate to him detested him. And they had, all, they, have all, they had all gone away. Even the closest friends forgotten him, imagine, had forgot him. Then those that he, he loved turned against him, he says in this text. And worse even, even the little boys in the village, in the community, would ridicule him. Imagine becoming so miserable until boys ridicule you, shout at you. Boys in the village, boys as you, as you walk around the streets. So he went through a desperation from within himself, from his family, and from the community at large. Indeed, this was a man in desperation. However, our theme for today is hope in desperation. He needed hope. And what is this hope? A hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire that a particular thing will happen. Even if things are difficult, it is grounds for believing that something good may happen tomorrow. That a feeling of trust, hope gives trust, brings out trust that tomorrow things will be different. You know, having aspirations, having a desire, a wish, an expectation, or even a plan or a dream that things will be different tomorrow. And this is what Job had. That despite the desperation he was going through, he had hope. Praise the name of the Lord. Despite all the desperation that he went through in the same chapter, Job says a number of things in hope. Number one, he says, although I am rejected by the society, by my wife, by my family, although I feel down within me, he says, I know my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. I know my Redeemer lives. In this, he talks about a God who is alive, that God is not dead. He is alive in his life. And he controls the world. He felt like someone who may have been devastated by everything, but he has a God who lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Number two, he says, in the end, this God will stand. That not everything else will stand. After everything is ended, he has a God who will stand on his earth. Praise the name of the Lord. God has a last word. Although humanity may destroy him or they may hate him, they may alienate him, he may have a bad breath to his wife, you know, and feel like he is rejected. He had a God in heaven who had his last word. Oh, hallelujah. And he is the Alpha and Omega, our God who cares. He so hope in God as one who stands at the, earth at the very, very end. And then number three, he says, after my skin has been destroyed. Because earlier there, he said that he was, his, bone was, his body was just bone, skin and bones. And his body was getting destroyed. And members of this congregation and those who are listening to me sometimes may go, be going through pain of sickness, disease. And sometimes we may become even bones. We may, we may have no glory. And in the pain and disease, which is the reality even in this season of corona, we have a God who lives. Amen. That, that sickness may have its effect. However, 
and it can't be ignored. It is pushing us. Even financially, we are going through challenges in the areas of, 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 of diseases. And as he sees that, he does not see his end. Praise the name of the Lord. He, of course, acknowledges that he is sick. Because lack of acknowledgement is indeed denial. He acknowledges what he was going through. So in his hope, it is not hope against lack of reality. And please, I'll repeat this. That the fact that he was realizing what he was going through means that his hope was beyond what he was going through. Not that his hope killed what was there. It is still there. And sometimes we go through challenges in life. We go through pain in life. And sometimes we need to have hope even when that pain is still there. Praise the name of the Lord. It is what we call hope against hope. Having hope against hope. Although everything is saying otherwise, you can stand and say, even though my skin is down. Then number four, he says, yet in my flesh I will see the Lord. Hallelujah. What a prayer. That one time he will see the Lord. And not just seeing him in the other life, even in this life. That one time the Lord will come and heal him. That one time the Lord will restore him. That one time things will not be the same. That he will see the Lord. And, and not him. Not, not, not another person. He does not want to talk about a, a God. Ule wakufikishiwa maneno na mtu mungine. Kwa mba mtu waliona mungu basi na kwambia ya memuona na una amini ya memuona. Niwe kumuona we mwenyewe. And let me say this. That God reveals to us. He reveals himself to us personally. That our relationship with him is so personal and intimate. That we are able to feel him. Praise the name of the Lord. And then number five. He says, oh, how my heart yearns within me to see the Lord. That he has a desire in his heart. He feels enthused. He has a desire. He has a wish to see the Lord. That tomorrow, I have a desire to see the Lord. He has an energy, an energy from within. And maybe, let me say this. Whenever it is that we are in trouble, whenever it is that we are in a state of hopelessness, let us have that desire in us that things will be different tomorrow. Let it, let it be that energy that comes from within that pushes us even when challenges are there. The situations may be different outside, but from within, my prayer today is that God may give us energy. We may yearn to see him. We may yearn to, 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 to have an experience with him. We may yearn to see him visiting with us. Praise the name of the Lord. So, though in those five statements, there were statements of hope that despite what he was going through, there is hope for him. Praise the name of the Lord. And how many of us here are going through desperation? How many of us here are going through pain? How many of us feel hopeless? Do not know what to eat tomorrow. You are there. You don't know what your family holds for you tomorrow. You don't know what your health holds. And you are in a state of desperation. You are in a state where you feel like your life has just been tattered and destroyed. And there is no hope. My prayer today is that you may stand with your, the servant of God, Job, and say, I know my demand is. I know there is hope for tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. And in conclusion, I want to say this. We should hope in hope against hope. Praise the name of the Lord. Book of Romans 4.12 says that Abraham hoped in hope against hope. Meaning that all things were showing there is no hope for him to get a baby. But he hoped against that hope until he got a baby. So can we sometimes have hope against that hope? You know, hope even when hope is, is down. Hope even when there is no foundation for hope. Hope even when else, everything else is saying otherwise. Then, of course, this hope is not false hope. I said this earlier. It is hope that is anchored in God. It is not baseless hope. It is hope that we have a God in heaven who cares for us, who thinks about us, that God has not forgotten us. Even when Job had his wife, his family lost, his wife refused, uh, refused to come close to him. Even when, when, when his female servants were against him and saw him as a stranger, he had his hope anchored in God. Bless the name of the Lord. Then, of course, this hope is an attribute of trusting God, that things will never be the same again, that things will be different tomorrow, that I can sleep this one more day. I can stay in this home that just one more night. I can go to this work just one more man. I can look up to this business just one more man. Just that hope, that hope, that hope, taking one day at a time. And because of this hope, we are not consumed. When the children of Israel were taken to exile, in the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, the Bible says that because the masses of the Lord are new every morning, we will not be consumed. So therefore, are you there and feeling consumed and destroyed? I want to encourage you and say this morning, 
and this day that you will not be consumed. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, our loving Father, we thank you so much for your word. Our prayer is that we may have hope even against all odds. Like your servant Job stood firm and knew that you live, our God, that you stand at the very end, that even when our bodies are affected, we will see you. Father, give us it, this living hope that is in your son, Jesus Christ, that all of us here, God, who are going through troubles, going through pain, may find hope in you. So God Almighty, visit with us and bless us because you are a gracious God. For this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.